Just and feel just like that one. Good. After this, I'll ask you a question. Okay. Don't look yet. Well, go ahead and look. I don't even have a question. Okay, Ogano, we're going to look at your putting technique uh, compared to Tiger. To begin with, your setup looks uh, very solid. I like the fact that you've, you've got a good width in your stance. You've got your elbows tucked into your sides. That's very good. Going to look at Tiger Stroke first as he takes it back. And then strikes the ball. At this moment, his eyes are down. As he finishes his swing, his eyes are still down as the ball rolls away. Eyes are still down. His putter comes to a stop and he'll hold that position. He'll hold his spine angle, his finish, his posture for a moment or two even after the, the swing concludes. And then only after a moment or two will he turn his head. And then while he turns his head, he will still keep his spine angle the same. He's now turning his head to look at the ball roll. While he's looking, he's still holding his finish and his spine angle. So he doesn't lift up. Uh, he doesn't recoil uh, the putter back. A recoil means he doesn't pull the, the putter back. So it's putt, hold, look which is what we worked on later. But this, the, your technique on the right is the technique that you used at the beginning of the session before there was any instruction. And then as you took it back and then came through, your eyes are down at impact, but you do immediately start to turn your head as that ball rolls away. And not only are you turning, you're kind of lifting and losing your spine angle. But one of the things I wanted to work on and make part of your new technique is the putt, hold, and look. Now here's your putting stroke when we were doing the cluster drill. Has your eyes down. And you kept them down until your stroke completed. Now this particular drill was a putt and hold without any look. You hit all three balls without looking at the result. And, and of course, we, we remember that you clustered them. They were no more than a foot apart. That was a very good uh, demonstration of the cluster drill. Now the only thing I'd like to talk a little bit about was how you used your wrist during the swing. First, let's look at Tiger. What I've done with both of you, I've drawn the letter Y tracing your arms and the shaft of the club. And uh, that's a pretty standard position at, and when you set up. You want to have that shaft of the putter kind of coming right off the center of your hands uh, and the V of your two arms. And what you try to do or would like to do is swing the, the arms and the club in, as almost one piece so that the letter Y stays intact and you don't change the angles in your in your letter Y. I'm going to take Tiger back first to the his follow through. So as he goes back and then forward, when he finishes, he, his Y is still pretty much intact. The angle between his right arm and shaft is still a little bit there. And you had a tendency to, to flip the right hand and cup the back of the left hand a little bit more as you came through. You have pretty much a straight line right here with the right arm, and here's your left arm. So you kind of lost that angle in the behind, on the back of the right hand, and you increased the angle of the back of the left hand. You did what I called cupping. Tiger still has a little bit more of his Y uh, intact there. So there is some evidence that you have a tendency to have a little bit of a, a cupping in the back of the left wrist, and that'll be something I'm going to want to continue to monitor 
and help you with in terms of uh, trying to have more of a one-piece stroke with your putter. Good. Okay. Great setup. Good. Good. Very compact, very much easier to be repeatable with this. That's one of your better ones. That's one of your better ones. chipping technique and on the right was before instruction and we're going to compare it first to uh, Luke Donald who's known as having one of the better short games uh, on tour right now and you can see that his feet are very close together as he comes through he's staying on that left foot you can see how his legs are kind of angled this way towards the target he's kind of putting a lot more weight on his forward leg his front leg uh, than his back leg. And as he comes through, he keeps his hands in front of his chest and he swings his chest and hands together as a one piece. So you can see how he's moving his chest, his belly button, his belt buckle. You can even watch his right hip and right knee come through. His arms and club are moving as one piece, just like in putting. He has kept his Y intact as he comes through in one piece. And when he finishes, he's, he's basically facing the target with his eyes, his chest, his belt buckle. Okay, now we're going to follow your stroke through. You had a wider stance. Um, this was before instruction. Stay pretty stable. Fairly long backswing for the, the short shot that we were trying to hit. I want to pay particular attention to your left hand in that here's your left hand here. And right as you hit the ball, here's your left hand. You can see how your left hand kind of stops right at impact. And you end up with a fairly strong angle and cupped left wrist right there. Here's Roy McElroy. Uh, again, I want you to watch how his hands and chest move together in one piece right there. Here's Tiger. Again, you can see how his chest, his right hip, his knee, his feet are very close together. He's moving his hands and arms. He doesn't let that left hand stop and flip the club through. Now here you are later in the session where we adjusted the stance. You're choking down. Your feet are close together. You're opening your stance slightly. Uh, you know, the shaft is leaning a little bit, which is what we talked about, having that shaft leaning just a little bit, tilted toward the target. Very good setup. Not a lot of wrist angle in the backswing. It's just a nice little sweeping chips action. Not trying to hit the ball very far. As you come through, that left hand is moving through. Look at this. Look at these angles here. That's beautiful right there as you come through. You're not cupping that wrist. Keeping that club finished. Your, your hands now are together working as a unit. Here's your hands. Your chest. Your sternum is this way, your belt buckles this way. 
So over time, you can even turn your eyes and follow the ball with your eyes and swing your head with the chest. That'll be fine. And the only thing that I'll probably want to adjust a little bit is feeling this move to the left. Sometimes you you almost lift the back foot too much. You can kind of lean the foot to the target, but you don't have to uh, lift the heel off the ground for some of these small chip shots. Here's another one where you, you execute all the fundamentals really well. Uh, I'm, but the back foot does get a little bit excessive in its lift to the left. Here I was demonstrating how to keep the back foot a little bit quiet. Again, here's Luke, and you can just watch his back foot. Very quiet. He's, his right hip is turning. His right knee is, is turning to the target. But he's not lifting the back foot. There really isn't enough movement to cause that. Again, let's watch that back foot. Fairly quiet feet. His center of his body, his hips are turning to the target, his chest is turning to the target, his right knee is, but he's not lifting that back foot. Now, right after I demonstrated the movement, you did several practice swings that were just perfect. Look. Watch how quiet that back foot is. It's just, it's just perfect. And that's what you wanted to work on. Now when you got up to the ball, you did get the foot lifted again quite a bit, so we'll have to work more on that.